relax, my back's time to move on All we want is to grow old Every day it's just the same song Cause this life is all we've ever known Drinking all night and all day Driving 90 on the highway Through all the chances that we take everybody welcome to the podcast i'm your host kara mccarran and um it is good friday so if you celebrate happy good friday if you oh if you do not well happy friday um if you are watching this on youtube you will um i'm fiddling with my hair it's time to cut it and if you can see the, you can see the door just opened and Bianca walked in. So let me just focus on her for one second. There we go. Okay. Enough of that. Um, first thing I want to mention, if you're watching this, obviously if you're listening, you can't see this, but I just got a Shein order and I'm obsessed with it. Um, the shirt that I'm wearing is from there. It's a little bit too big, but that's okay. Um, better a little too big than too small, I say. But um, yeah, I got a bunch of cute things and I'm happy. And it's always kind of hit or miss with that stuff, but they're pretty consistent. So if you're looking for clothing that's reasonably priced, decent content, or decent content, decent quality, then um, go for it. Okay. So I've been given my content calendar for the next quarter and I'm not following it. So Sydney, if you're listening, she's my uh, social media strategist, her company is, and I apologize. But what I want to talk about today is the subconscious. I'm going to refer to it as the SM. Uh, My coach, Catherine, refers to it that way in some of her content. And I just get kind of tired of saying subconscious mind. So I'm just going to interchange them. So if I say SM, you know what it means. So some of you um, know that I am currently revamping, we'll say, the entire um, Love Soldier program. So the first iteration of the program was called She's the Owner. The second iteration of the the course is called um, the Love Soldier program. And the third, so 3.0, I guess, or maybe 2.0, depending how you look at it, is um, how to build your business like a love soldier. And that's really, you know, actually Sydney and I had a conversation yesterday really briefly. We talked constantly, but we talked really quickly about, she's like, well, but that's not all you do. Are you sure you want to focus on that? And I'm like, it's not, it's definitely not all I do, but it's how I'm going to get the fe- the masculine energy business women to wake, to wake up kind of, right? And to hear it because that's how I am and that's how I was before I would... I wouldn't listen to mindset work necessarily, and I might not listen to inner healing, but I would listen to business advice. So, and the reality is, is that when you learn this stuff and you go through your healing and you go through your mindset work and you build a business like a love soldier, then that business is radically different than, than other businesses because you've done the work and that gives you a higher chance of success. So I'm revamping the the entire program into like these three categories, which have, and you're going to hear me talk a lot about it. And you're going to hear me talk about coming into the program and you're going to hear about me talking about coming to the retreat and to the event because, and, and there's a funny reel going around. If you don't talk about your business, you don't have a business. If you don't talk about your business, and that's the truth, ladies and gents, whoever's listening, like if you don't talk about what you do and nobody knows how to work with you, what the fuck is the point? Like there's no ego in it. I'm not sitting here like egomaniacally talking about my company. I want to serve thousands and thousands of women. And the only way I'm going to get to do that is if I open my mouth and I talk about what I do and how I can serve you. And so there's no shame in that. And I really, and that would be a subconscious belief, but we'll get to that in one second. So the program is like in three chunks. Now it's first chunk is mindset. Second chunk is inner healing. And third chunk is the business. And I am telling you, and I'm going to say over and over again, you're going to hear it in my orbit constantly. If you don't do the first thing, 
then you won't do the second thing. And if you don't do the second thing, you won't do the third thing. What I mean by that is if you aren't primed, your mindset's not primed to be open to different, like, sorry to cap my glasses. Um, if it's not primed, then you're not going to even remotely be interested in, 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 uh, inner healing. So hear me, hear me say that one more time. If your mindset has not been opened up and you haven't started to look at things from this perspective of, I have a choice, life is happening for me and not to me. Like if you haven't done that mindset work piece first, then you're never going to be open to the inner healing because the inner healing only happens when your mindset changes. It, it, it's not even that it only happens. It's only something you're, you're considering as an option or as a need when your mindset changes. So for example, like if your mindset's really closed off, right. And you're like, um, I hate my life or I'm not happy with my life, but there's nothing I, I can do about it why on earth would you ever look into personal or into inner healing? Like, why would you look into inner child work? Why would you look into shadow? None of those things would even be on your radar if your mindset was still stuck in the matrix where it's like, my life sucks and this is how it is, right? And a lot of time, like the reality is, is that most of us have gone to Tony Robbins events or we've gone to Joe Dispenza events or we've gone to um, you know, Brendan Bouchard, or we've gone to Grant Cardone or Gary Vaynerchuk, you know, Rachel Hollis, like the list goes on and on. Those are all mindset, right? So you go to the mindset event. I've gone, you know, I'd gone to however many Tony Robbins events before it all really started to click. And all of a sudden I'm like, oh, so I've done the mindset work, but things still aren't shifting. I've done the business work, but things still aren't shifting. What am I missing? And there's that middle bucket of inner healing. And it's like, holy fuck, I had, it wasn't even on my radar. It, it was no business people talked about it. Nobody brought it up. And so why would I, I've only discovered it the hard way, the long way around, because I'm like, why am I still stuck? Like, why am I not doing, why am I not in, you know, conference rooms with a thousand women or two or 10,000? Why is that not happening yet? If that's what I'm saying I want, and that's how I'm going to impact. Why is that not happening yet? Well, because I hadn't done the inner healing and I'm actively in that process now, which is why this program is going to be fucking lit because I really honestly, sincerely with every bone in my body know that if you don't do the three things like this, and it doesn't have to be with me, but it should be in one cohesive space because I piecemealed it together. And when you piecemeal it together, it takes longer. Like, that's just how it is. It takes longer to do this work. If you're like, I'm going to go spend five years on my mindset. I'm going to go spend 10 years on my inner healing and then four years on it. Like I, and I'm not to say that, like, you know, you go through the love soldier program and all of a sudden everything's hunky dory, but I feel deeply that you have a way better chance of making a go of your business. If you've done these things in this, in this three order. So and I'm passionate about it. And it's like, here's the other reality is that it's taken time for me to gel this out, just like it will take you time. I mean, the content company's first iteration, we were selling, and I'm, I mean, I'm not, no longer with the company, but we were selling four blogs a month. Back then we charged 250 and I was calling up the plumber. I was calling up the real estate agent. I was calling up the salon instead of calling the marketing company that, um, was doing all the marketing for those kind of places. And then all of a sudden we got approached by that and I was like, oh, okay. So it takes time for things to gel. It took time for us to gel in that area. It took time for us to figure out how to hire and how to build team and all that stuff. But the way that I'm looking at things now and the way that I want to share it with my client base and with those of you that are going to come into the program is like, let's expedite it quite a bit. It's not a silver bullet. And I really hate, like, I know humans need to hear quantifiable numbers and they need to feel like, oh, I can do this in a certain amount of time. I can't tell you that because that's a lie. It does, it, there's no, there's no time frame. There's no formula of time frame. Time's not even real. It's like a construct of humanity, right? Like it's not even a real thing. But there's no way to tell you this is going to happen in this many weeks or this many months. Like the people that say that, and P.S., I was one of them. And I said it with all the love in my heart. But there's so many people who are saying it and who are knowingly lying and, and setting people up to feel this 
in intense failure when they've gone through the three month program or whatever the number is and they haven't fucking figured it out. It drives me. And that was me. I've gone through program and program, event and event. And I'm like, why am I still here? Because I didn't do the inner healing part. I did the mindset work. I did the business stuff. I can like, listen, my business coach that I had last year completely rocked my world in how to set this business up. Amazing. Cool. Like I couldn't have asked for a stronger coach, a business coach to help me set it up. But why did it fail? Like in my, and, and not fail, but why did it not go the way I wanted it to go? Because I hadn't done the middle bucket. I did the mindset. I did the business and I was missing the inner healing. Right. And so this is the problem with, you know, program after program, coach after coach is like some will, and some will do this, some will do that. And I'm not, you know what, it's always going to be a journey, but let's at least fucking talk about it. Like, you know, the, like I said, the first bucket mindset, let's get the mindset going. Let's get out, get under those limiting beliefs. Let's do all that shit. And then the second bucket is inner child. Like that is the, one of the most, and Hey, you can go through the whole program and you're going to still have stuff that needs to come out. And maybe that's when you look for alternative things to do, right? You know, I talk about plant medicine. That's a journey I'm going to be taking this year. And I'm going to do it in an extremely safe environment. I'm going to do it in a beautiful um, place where it's very supported and all of those things. And who knows what's going to come up for me. But like there's in my belief, in my the way that I'm looking at this is there's no skipping this part. There's no skipping the healing. There's no skipping the mindset. Like it's not just about fucking funnels. It's not just about landing pages. It's not just about SEO and buyer personas. Like that is the easy part. Like that is the easy part in my opinion. The hard part is getting your mind straight, getting your inner healing work done. So redoing the entire program to really fit into these three buckets. And, and here's what's really in my current clients that are in the program. Now, once they get moved into it, they can redo it, but they're going to redo it the same as everybody else who's just starting. Um, and we're launching this June. So if you're interested, please reach out. Um, my, you know, my goals are lofty. I really want to fucking change the way we do business. Um, but it's going to be released in increments. So right now, if you had signed up and our, and our membership is closed right now, but if you'd signed up previously, then you have the whole entire friggin' library of content at your disposal. Go through it when you want to go through it, blah, blah, blah. And I have changed that and I've never done it where I'm releasing certain things at certain times, but that's happening this time. Why? Because I'm finding that my masculine energy women who PS all of you are, All of you are, if you're in business and you're looking to up level your game in business, that means you're in your masculine and you probably don't know how to shift in and out, which I will teach you. But like you will go and consume the whole fucking thing in four weeks. Not even, not even some of you will do it quicker. And then you just sit with it and you sit with it and you sit with it and you don't do anything with it. So I'm, try sorry I have like a piece of blueberry stuck in my mouth um I have done the programs where all the content's available and I've done ones that it's uh, it's um released at certain times the ones that release at certain times vastly Im- improve my outcome so that's what we're doing we're only releasing it at First, we'll do the mindset, then we're going to do inner healing and then business and business is at the end because it's the most, it's the easiest thing, but it's the thing that if that's what you came for, you got to do the other two buckets first. I will not teach you business stuff until you've done the first two buckets. And I'm getting to that point in my, in my business or my career or whatever, where I'm just not going to bend these rules just because other people are bending the rules. I'm no longer following the pack of other coaches. I'm going to do things the way that I feel called to do and the way that I feel aligned. And the way I feel aligned is to do it in this order. Mindset, inner healing, business. And that's the end of it. So um, if you're if you're interested in any of that, let me know. I'm happy to send you information, but you can find it all on the website. If you go onto lovesoldiers.ca, you're going to find all that info. So 
let's really quick. I'm not going to go deep into the subconscious mind, but I'm going to kind of just maybe talk a couple points about what it does, how you can see if what it really thinks, and then maybe one or two ways to start reprogramming it. So your subconscious mind is also known as the unconscious mind. And I refer to it um, based on one of my coaches from a few years ago um, as tiny mind. Your subconscious mind or your SM or tiny mind or ego, really, it's always working. There's no off button. There's no like when, you know, you go to sleep, you're not, you're no longer consciously awake. It doesn't do that. It's always in motion. It works 24 hours a day, seven days a week for the whole entirety of your life. And what it's in charge of, it's in charge of making your behaviors and your emotions match your programming. So it's programmed, right? It's like a computer that got programmed before you were seven. And it's, and all the things like when you think about zero to seven, that age range, that's like, that's the cream of the crop, man. That's like when you're putting all the things that you want a kid to believe, that's when you're in, in inserting those beliefs. So your beliefs about you know, gender, beliefs about religion, beliefs about business, maybe beliefs about how your parents make money, like all of those things. It's just a big fucking sponge. And so from seven on, it either works for you to help you or it doesn't. And let's be honest, most of us, our programming is just passed down programming from like when you think about if you don't do like an, you know, whenever you get a friggin' what's it called? An update on your cell phone, right? Like if you hadn't done an update on your cell phone from five generations of phones ago, your phone wouldn't work. It's really similar. Like if, if you didn't consciously do an upgrade, you're, it's like playing telephone, right? So I'm, I was programmed with beliefs that my great, great, great grandmother was programmed with and not, and it's, and, and the thing I really want to be clear about is that it's not, a lot of times I think people get to this feeling or vibe of like, oh, I can't blame my parents. They didn't mean to. No, nobody's fucking saying that. But like the important thing is to be aware, like wake up to it. Don't be just out of guilt or out of feeling you don't want to make somebody feel bad or all this bullshit. Like you still need to wake up to it. Wake up to the fact that, okay, maybe my mom and dad didn't mean to program me like this, but they did. And so now it's my job to do the opposite or to do, because look at your life. Is your life going the way that you want it to go? If the answer is meh or mm, not totally, if it's not a fuck yes, then it's a no. And if your life isn't going the way that you want it to, your business isn't growing the way that you want it to, your sex life isn't going the way you want it to, your relationship life, your family life, all of the things, like if you're not living, you know, a high eight out of 10 on any of those categories, it's okay. But you need to look at why. Am I programmed, is my subconscious mind programmed to eat the shit on a regular basis? Or is it programmed to have abundance? Is it programmed for scarcity? Is it programmed for business? Is it programmed to work for somebody else and hate it? Like these are the things that there's never, if you, if you start to re remove the blame and the guilt and the shame around all of this stuff, then like li literally that's the only time that you're actually going to make a shift in your life. Because if you don't, if you don't move the guilt and if you don't move the anger, you don't move the expectations, you don't move any of that shit, you're gonna continuously live in that zone of victimhood. Because all of those things are code for victim. It's not until you go, okay, so I'm not gonna feel bad about it. I'm not gonna feel angry about it. Nobody did it to me on purpose. Even if they did, who fucking cares? I'm going to shift the way that my subconscious behaves, then the real magic happens. That's when shit can get exciting. But if you're still living in the, well, you know, oh, I feel bad or I, this, it's, it doesn't matter. Like your subconscious doesn't care. It doesn't, it's not invested in what you say. Like it's not invested. It's just going to do what it's been programmed to do. And so if you want to live in that victimhood or you want to live, and this is tough love, but it's important because, you know, whatever age you're at, wouldn't you prefer to live the rest of your life fucking kicking ass and taking names and having the best time of your life? Cool. Me too. So in order for me to do that, I have to question what the shit is not like what's not working and why is it not working how can i shift it how can i make a change how can i reap because it all begins with the subconscious 
Okay, I know I'm it's I'm told you it's gonna be crazy. <sighs> One of the other things that I really want to bring up about the subconscious mind is that it actually is there to keep you safe. For example, like when I was at the when I my first UPW in person, it was like <laughs> I, I was w wildly wrong on my expectation of that event. And I'm happy that I was. Now I've been to a bajillion of them. But when I was getting primed on the Thursday, should I, well, I mean, I guess I did. No, who cares? There's not enough of you that are gonna be like, you ruined it for me. But on, sorry, that was my alarm, my 11-11 alarm. If you've heard me talk about it, I highly recommend setting an alarm. I'll tell you what mine says for 11-11. I'm here or I'm here to change thousands of women's lives all over the world. That's my alarm. Okay, back to my UPW. So the, and the reason I'm bringing this up is a direct correlation with why your subconscious does what it does. So we get primed on Thursday for most of the day to do our fire walk. And yes, it is like it sounds. No, it's not flames. We're not going through a fire. We're walking on it. The coals are like 1200 to 2000 degrees hot. There, it's no joke. And I've done five fire walks and I can tell you never have I been like, yes, excited. I get pumped and I get into peak state, but I'm not like running to the fire going, please let me walk on the fire. Why? Because my subconscious is like, fucking hell, what is she trying to do to us? And so your subconscious is there to protect you. When you, when you start to feel, and I don't know if you've ever heard of Mel Robbins, she talks about the five second rule. Your subconscious can feel, so if I respond, so just track with me here. If I think about going on a fire walk and I'm walking towards and I'm following the crowd of 10,000 people to my fire walk, my resistance will be felt within five, to the count of five by my subconscious. So that means I have five seconds to go. So if I'm standing at the line, okay, and I'm saying, yes, yes, yes. And I'm getting into peak state and I'm ready. And the crew is there to get me going. I have five seconds between when I decide to fucking go and going. So if I go, yes, and then I wait more than five seconds, my subconscious will kick in and go, oh God, she's panicked. There's hesitation. Let's get her out of here. And I will turn around. And I did do that. I turned around a couple times, I think. So... When you make a decision, like if you're making a decision to go to the gym and you sit and you give yourself more than five seconds, if like, let's say, you know, you don't want to go, but if you give yourself five, more than five seconds, your subconscious will get louder and louder and louder. And it will do things like, ah, uh, you can go later. Like if right now I said, I'm going to the gym, I have to get up and go to the fucking gym. If I give myself five seconds, because my subconscious feels the emotion of resistance and hesitation, it's going to take that as a signal as I'm in danger and it will act accordingly. And it will try because it's uncomfortable. The subconscious feels because my emotion will say to it, ooh, this doesn't feel good. I'm not excited to go to, to whatever, whatever. And it will immediately give you its job. Remember, it's a reptilian brain. It's been there you know, for as long, Tony says 2000 year old brain, it will sense my hesitation and it will sense my freak outedness and it will give me an out because that's its job because it's perceiving me going to the gym or me walking through fire or me picking up the phone or me going live or me doing a podcast or me doing a friggin' live event. It will go, Ooh, I can feel she's freaking out. I better do something. And boom, it goes into action. And then it gives you an opportunity to get out of it because that's its job. Okay. Don't be fooled by it. Like if you're in an actual dire situation, you won't walk in. Like I'm not talking about standing at the end of a road and being like, I'm walking into traffic. Your subconscious brain won't allow it. But start to be discerning between feeling uncomfortable and feeling truly unsafe, right? You know the difference. You're all adults. I don't have to tell you the difference between walking off of a friggin' building or clicking the live. It will feel the same, but it's, we know consciously, right? This is when the conscious brain kicks in. You know it's not the same. So just start to get discerning about it. But it's, it's, that's its job. It's designed to keep you safe and comfortable. 
And and here's a really I love this line. It's 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 a servant. What you tell it or how you program it is how it will behave. So when you're stuck on like, okay, well, cool, because this is where my brain goes. I'm like, well, if it's subconscious and I'm unaware of it, how the fuck do I know? Like what I'm what it's thinking versus what I'm saying I'm thinking. Like that doesn't make sense to me. I don't get it. Somebody explain this shit to me. So here's the easiest way for you to look at it. And this was the easiest way for, for me to look at it as well. What is the result? So my, this is the, the best example that I can give you in kind of real time. So you can kind of track with me on this, but the way that, uh, okay. So consciously I say, I want to serve a thousand women at the love soldier conference in June, 2023. That's what I consciously say. Or, and, and that's what I I'm saying that I want. Okay, cool. I have, so up until recently I did zero with that. And what do I mean by that is I made no phone calls. I made no discovery, you know, discovery calls. I made no looking into event space. I made not zero. So I'm saying I want to have an event in June of 2023, the first ever three day love soldier conference. The result is I haven't called anybody. I haven't booked anything. I haven't started talking about it until recently. I haven't done all these things. The result is what my subconscious actually thinks. So my conscious self, AKA my lip service. And if you're watching this, I'm doing duck hands. My conscious self is saying, I want to have this event. The result is I haven't done fuck all for the event. So the result tells me my subconscious is like, bullshit, you're a liar. Because your result is actually what your subconscious is believing, not your conscious. Because people say to me all the time, but I want to do this and I want to do that. And I go, cool. I'm looking at your life and your bank account is low. I'm looking at your life and you're single. I'm looking at your life and you're still overweight. But I want to lose weight. Your subconscious does not believe you yet because the result is... A res- like the current reality is a result of what your subconscious is thinking back in the day. And back in the day isn't like years ago. It could be the last three months. So when you're confused about, well, what's my subconscious actually telling me and what's it actually thinking? Look at the result. Are you doing the business that you want to do? Are you doing the career that you want to do? Are you in the same, like, is your body and is your fitness, like I've started going to the gym. So now I, and, and I'm going to get to how you reprogram it, but I'm not going to go deep because you got to come into the program for this shit because I could go on forever. But like, if you're looking at proof of what your subconscious mind, your SM is thinking and doing, behaving and believing, just look at the result. And like my coach said that to me, I don't know, probably three years ago. And I was like, holy fuck, because now I, it's quantifiable. Now I can say, well, I haven't done this, this, and this, or I haven't lost this weight, or I haven't this or blah, 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 blah. I'm single. I'm still repeating patterns because I haven't conditioned my subconscious yet to believe what I am saying which is great news. It means, okay, cool. This is not random. This is not just happening because my result isn't just happening because my life isn't just this way, just because it's because I haven't done the work to reprogram it. So let's talk really briefly about reprogramming the subconscious. I'm going to have a sip of water because I'm going crazy here. So how do you, I'm going to give you two things. Maybe even one. We'll see how how deep I go. But so journaling is by far one of the most powerful ways to reprogram your subconscious. Why? Because when you write it, you invite it. And I'm not talking typing. I'm talking pen to paper. Pick up a fucking pen, throw on some music and write your friggin' ass off. When I recommend journaling, because that's what, what we're talking about. When I recommend journaling to my clients, I want them to write it as if. So a lot of times people will journal. Um, I can't wait until I'm in Sedona doing my retreat. I can't wait until I have my conference in Florida and there's a thousand women. That's bullshit. Why is that bullshit? And I'm not trying to diss anybody who's told you to journal that way. They don't know any better. 
But your body, the way that we reprogram the subconscious is when we get in the feeling of the thing. So if I'm writing, I'm not thinking, like if I'm writing, I can't wait, maybe I'll get a little bit excited. Okay, but it's still not powerful enough to re just like incantations versus affirmations. Incantations are physical, like when you do your yes, your power statement, when you do all of those things, your body is in it, your emotion is in it, emotion is motion, okay? So when you're doing those type of things, that type of journaling where it's like in the future, your body's not in it. You're not embodying whatever it is you're talking about. You're thinking, oh, that'd be nice someday, and some days always there. It's never here. So what I recommend is writing as though, write as if it's happening today or it just happened, but in that zone. So it, mine would sound like I'm so, I cannot believe I'm, or not, can't see that would, that would not be good NLP. I'm so excited that we have sold a thousand tickets to the Love Soldier Conference. I am so pumped. Tomorrow is going to be the best day one in the history of the universe. And I'm writing like it's just happening or it's happening right this, like within the next couple of days, not like months away, weeks away, years away. It's got, because the feeling that you're gonna get is when it's like, let's say if you're writing it right now, right? If I'm writing right now, and I would be nervous probably partly too, cause I am nervous. I'm nervous to do an event that size. That's huge for me. That's massive, but you have, to, I have to, I have no other options anymore. I, I can't hide from it anymore. I've tried to hide around doing a, my own event like this for years, years, you guys, and I can't hide from it anymore. So fuck it. I'm nervous. Okay. What's the worst that's going to happen? Nothing, nothing, nothing. So if I'm, if I'm writing as though it's a totally different energy than if I'm writing as if someday. So when you're writing in your journal, talk about the smells, talk about what you're seeing, talk about what you hear, talk about the people that are there. If it's your body, what kind of outfit are you wearing? Talk about what the sun looks like when you're looking at the mirror. And, and that's how we do our perfect day exercise as well. But like get so specific in all of your senses around it all of your senses around it. And when you're writing it, please, again, present or very, like very teensy tiny little bit of the future, like within a day or two. Don't write it like it's months and weeks away. And here's my biggest hack for when I journal. And I'm actually gonna journal when I'm done recording this podcast because I have not been great at it. I have, and why, this is a beautiful example of what I'm talking about on this episode. I haven't been consistently journaling for a while, like probably a few months now where it's like eh, off and on. Why? Because my subconscious is my ego is fighting what is fucking scary. What's scary? Scary to me, the immediate scary is having 200 women in this mastermind at one time. I've never had a class that big. That freaks me out. Scary is thinking, okay, I'm going to book this, you know, plan this, this goddess retreat that we're doing in Sedona in September and nobody's going to want to come. So what am I doing? I'm not like, it's like, it's the chicken and the egg. I know if I write consistently every day and I reprogram because when you reprogram your mind, the energy around you changes, you call in different things, vibration changes, all of those things. But I know if I do the thing, then the thing's gonna come to me and that freaks me out. So my subconscious mind goes, fuck you, I'm not doing it. I have to override it and I'm going to, I'm going to override it. Today I'll start overriding it. And that's all it is. This is not rocket science, you guys. This is just overriding the program. I did I did uh, computer like programming in grade seven, okay? Like on a DOS, I think, like way back in the day. And we would learn how to override things. That's all this is. The subconscious mind wants is it's designed to keep you safe. Your job is to do an override. So when you're journaling, play music, get into the zone. I have some, I mean, here's another hack, right? Like if you're, if you want to, if you want to do like, I'll, I'll, I always try to relate it to what I'm doing so that I'm not like telling you what to do, but I'm saying this is my experience. So in my experience, 
music is really, really powerful for me. So when I'm writing about the Love Soldier Conference, there's a certain playlist that I'm going to listen to when I'm doing that, because I know already, like even when I'm saying it, I'm getting, my eyes are filling up with tears. I know exactly how the fuck it's going to feel when I look at a thousand of you women just, and actually it's going to be open to men as well, but I'm looking at a thousand people and I'm like, whoo, shit, we did it. These people are here to fucking change their lives. So if there's music playing to that, it anchors even more inside of me. So play some music. So I'm actually just going to give you that one tip um, because I'm going to end up going way over. But write it down. Writing honestly is the single most powerful thing you can do to reprogram your subconscious mind, period. Um, Okay. That is it, my friends. Um, I think at the top of this show, you're going to be reminded to do a review. Please do reviews. Like they're so helpful and they do like, I need, you know, I need you to review it. If you, if you hate it, review it too. I want honest feedback. If you don't love it, give me honest feedback. But, um, if you love it as well, please do leave a five-star review and, um, just a couple words about what you get from this podcast. Cause it's helpful. That is it, my friends. I hope you have an amazing Easter weekend. Again, if you celebrate and um, that's it, that's all. I love you all and we'll see you and talk to you on the next episode. Bye.